We've all heard of the deism of the Founding Fathers, of Thomas Jefferson denying Christ's miracles or Ben Franklin's fight for religious pluralism. But many, if not most, of the Founders were religiously orthodox, evangelical Christians, including one who could technically be considered the first president of the United States, Elias Boudinot. The Boudinot family were Huguenots, French Calvinists forced to flee from the Catholic monarchy, settling in the Americas in 1686. Elias was born on April 21, 1740 in Philadelphia, and was well catechized in the revivalism of the Great Awakening through George Whitfield and Gilbert Tennant. Boudinot would study law at Princeton, become a trustee of his church, and, through community connections in the local grammar school, mentor a young Alexander Hamilton. A respected patriot, Boudinot was elected to the Continental Congress in 1775. He would serve many roles during the war, contributing significantly to the Continental Army out of his own private funds. In 1782, he was elected president of the Congress, and, as he officially received the Treaty of Paris, he might be considered the first president of the United States. After the war, he was elected as one of New Jersey's representatives to the first Congress, serving three terms as a Federalist in favor of the new government institutions and policies of neutrality. In 1795, he became the first director of the U.S. Mint, a role he held for decades. In later life, Boudinot would become best known for his Christian writings. He countered the atheism of Thomas Paine's The Age of Reason with his own Age of Revelation and wrote a memoir of William Tennant, the son and successor of his boyhood pastor. Frustrated with the moral decline of the New Republic, he formed a local Bible society which would later merge to form the American Bible Society, which named Boudinot its first president. In his chapter on Boudinot in the book Faith and Founders of the American Republic, historian Jonathan Den Hartog describes Boudinot as a religious man with a vision for a righteous republic. He highlights Boudinot's advocacy for making Thanksgiving a national holiday, using explicitly Protestant language. He further points to Boudinot's deep concern about Jefferson's lack of religion, and describes Boudinot's efforts to advance Christianity in the Republic. Boudinot's anti-slavery advocacy and efforts to affirm the virgin birth and resurrection of Christ in public literature are cast as a union of his political and religious convictions. While other historians do not go as far as Hartog in seeing an essential unity between Boudinot's revivalist convictions and political actions, his Christian orthodoxy is well attested. In a centennial reflection on the Founding Fathers, Helen Boudinot Stryker summarizes him as an earnest and consistent Christian, a man of prayer, and a diligent student of the Bible, weighing his evangelical efforts with the ABS equal to his political career. Left-leaning evangelical historian Mark Knoll is not as convinced. He describes Boudinot's Whig ideology as a combination of commitments to Newtonian cosmology, the epistemology of Thomas Reed, and traditional Christianity which tried to enlist reason to maintain the moral and social order. Even as such, he is forced to acknowledge the seriousness of Boudinot's convictions. In conclusion, Elias Boudinot was as patriotic as he was religious, committed to forming a moral and just republic as one of our founding fathers.